Hey, it's Ox dear. Luke here, and in today's video, we are going over headlights restoration on the 80 pound Astra. Now, I've just put new headlights in this car, smoked ones off a later model. It's going to look so good against the silver paintwork, but as you can see, they are very, very oxidized. So, we're going to be going over all the steps to permanently restore these. We're going to be sanding them, we're going to be spraying them, we're going to be buffing them, and when they're done, they're going to look like a million dollars. Anyway, let's get into this. First question you're probably going to ask yourself is, am I going to do this on the car or take them off? Personally, I like doing them on the car, especially if it's an older, cheaper car like this, for a few reasons. First reason is it gives us a solid surface to work with. So this is bolted into the car, if we're sanding, that light's not moving, you're not fighting against it. Second thing is, if you've got like the bulbs on behind as you're doing some of the sanding from time to time, you're going to actually be able to see the progress of your work a lot better. And finally, the one final benefit to keeping them on the car is you don't have to remove the bumper and go to all that effort of taking them away. However, keeping them on the car, there is a couple of disadvantages, so it's entirely up to you. The disadvantages are, if you're sanding, there's a risk you can catch the paint, so you're going to have to make sure you're masking the area off and you're careful. Secondly, there's also a chance of overspray, so if you're clear coating, you also need to make sure that the area surrounding the car is going to be masked up, it's going to be or, you know, cornered off so that overspray is not going to get on the paintwork as well. Obviously, if you want to remove them from the car, that's your prerogative. Um, but I can't cover every removal procedure in this video because there's so many different ways of removing the headlights from different models of cars. So let's do these on the car. Everyone can follow this method. In this video, I'm using some pretty basic equipment that everyone should be able to use. So let me start by giving you a quick overview before we go into more depth. And by the way, I'll try to link everything I'm using in the description below. The restoration will be split into four stages, and stage one is removing the oxidization from the light and preparing it for the clear coat. We do this by using 400 and 600 grit sandpaper with a bottle of soapy water. I'm just using car shampoo here. This soap will be fine too. You'll also need some masking tape to protect the paint around the light. Let me be clear when it comes to sandpaper. The smaller the number, the rougher it is. For example, this 400 grit here is much harsher than the 3000 grit to be using towards the end of the video. And stage two is applying the clear coat with an aerosol can. You'll also need a large plastic bag to prevent overspray on the car. Stage three is to remove the orange peel left by from the aerosol can and to refine the light even further. For this, you're going to need 1500, 2000, 2500, and finally 3000 grit sandpaper. And then stage four is buffing the light to a crystal clear finish using either a machine polisher or doing it by hand before finally applying some type of wax or ceramic protection. The first thing we need to do is remove all the oxidization from the light and that's what this initial step of sanding will achieve. This is going to be the most aggressive part of the restoration so don't worry if when you start sanding that the clarity of the light might diminish even further. This is absolutely fine. All we're trying to do is remove the yellow oxidization that's on the surface of the light. Once that's been done, the light will be more of a monochrome scale rather than having this yellow tint to it. All I'm gonna do is go in with 400 grit sandpaper and a bottle of soapy water and start sanding in horizontal lines. The reason I'm going in horizontal motions and not circular is because when I refine the scratches in the next step, I can target all my sanding power by going perpendicular to the horizontal scratches rather than having to attack them at all angles. This makes future sanding stages quicker and more effective. You're going to know when the oxidization has been removed when you dry the light off and you find that one, all the yellow has been removed and two, the light has a very consistent uniform haze to it going in horizontal lines. If you've answered yes to both of those, then it's time to move on to the next step. Next, we're moving on to the 600 grit. And at this stage, all the oxidization has been removed, and now we're just refining the 400 grit scratches that we've caused. We do this by taking our 600 grit and sanding in vertical motions. You know when you're done with this stage by drying the light off and looking carefully at the scratches. If they're all going vertical and there's no horizontal scratches left, then you know you've eliminated all the 400 grit scratches. And once you've done that, you've finished with the initial sanding stages, and it's time to move on to the clear coat. Start by masking the car off, 
and I'm using a large plastic bag with a hole cut out for the light. Also, don't use packing tape like I did. I ran out of masking tape halfway through the shoot and had nothing else to use. Shake a can of clear coat for 2 minutes and apply a light dusting to the surface of the light. We'll get heavier later on. For now, we just want to make the surface a bit tacky so that our laser coats have something to stick to. You should see a little bit of colour already coming back into the light. Once applied, leave for 10 minutes before coming back and applying your second coat. Go a little bit thicker this time. You still don't need to aim for complete coverage yet, but it's better to build up on multiple light coats rather than fewer heavy ones. Again, once applied, leave it for another 10 minutes before coming in with your third coat. This is the heaviest, and you should aim for complete coverage. Obviously, you still want to keep at least 6 inches away, and don't go so slow that it starts to run. Remember, you can always add more coats later on. So, you can see at the moment, the lens is looking so much better than it did before, but we're not finished. Most YouTube videos will stop here and say, yeah, job done, looks uh, looks all restored. I don't think the clarity is as good as it could be. The main reason is there's a bit of orange peel in the clear coats, and that just really happens because we're using aerosol cans, we're not using a proper gun. The results are never going to be quite as good. So I'm actually going to stick another three coats of clear on this, so that's six in total, and there's a reason I'm doing that. See, the reason we want clear coat on the light is to make sure that there's adequate UV protection on there. And for that UV protection to be adequate and effective, we need to make sure at least a couple of millimetres of clear coat on the light. Now, like I said, we've got orange peel on here, which basically means it's uneven. There's peaks, there's valleys. And what we need to do, we need to level this out. So basically all the peaks come down to where the valleys are. And we've got a very smooth finish and the clarity is then going to be restored to a factory-like finish. If we just take our three coats of clear on here at the moment, um, you know, we're probably around that two millimetre mark. If we start sanding that down, that's going to start dipping below down. The UV protection is not going to be adequate. And in a year or two, maybe less, the lights are going to start turning yellow again. You're going to have to do the entire process from start to finish, which just defeats the point of doing it. So we'll go a bit more uh, overkill on the clear coat and make sure it's thicker than we need. We'll sand it back, make sure it's crystal clear and crucially, there's going to be enough UV protection on there to protect these lights for years to come. So, here we go. Another three coats, and apply these just like your third coat, leaving 10 minutes between each one. Once that's done, you want to leave the car for 24 hours for the clear coat to harden before we tackle the next step. 24 hours later, and it's time to go on our second stage of sanding. This is much finer than the initial sanding, and it's designed to make the light as smooth as possible, which in turn will increase the clarity. We're going to start by using 1500 grit in the exact same way you did earlier in horizontal motions. you notice that the light will become dull again and there'll be round shiny dots on it. And this is the orange peel. Essentially, you're hitting the high points of the clear coat with the sandpaper and dulling it but you've not been hitting the low points. And you want to carry on until those high points have been sanded down and the light has a uniform haze to it. And once that's done, you can move on to the next steps that will refine the scratches even further. Like you did before the clear coat, you want to go in vertical motions now with a 2000 grit sandpaper, then horizontal again with 2500 grit, and finally vertical with 3000 grit. These final stages really should only take a couple of minutes per light. With that, the sanding is done, and we're moving on now to our very final steps, and personally, my favourite. We're going to polish the light. Again, this is just really an extension of the sanding stage. You can almost think of these polishes and compounds as liquid sandpaper, just even finer. It will get to the point that the scratches become so fine that they're invisible to the naked eye, and they will appear completely clear. You can do this stage either with a machine polisher or by hand. If you're doing it by hand, apply your polish to a microfiber cloth and rub in circular motions of 5 minutes per light before wiping it off. At this stage, you should be amazed with the clarity that's come back into them. I'm using a machine polisher with auto finesse one step and a medium compounding pad before following up with Meguiar's ultimate polish on a softer polishing pad. There should be plenty of protection left on these lights. 
but it never hurts to add a temporary sacrificial layer on top. You can use paste wax if you want. Here I'm using a ceramic coating by Avalon King just for a final wow factor. And that's how you restore lights the proper way. I'm so happy with how these have turned out and they've literally taken decades off the front of the car. For more videos like this in the future, be sure to hit that subscribe button and bell notification icon. But until next time, thank you all for watching, see you soon, and take care.